Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. And first, can I say thanks very much for the organisers for organising fantastic weather. Apparently it's always like that in here, is that right? And um, second, second, I do have a tendency to speak rather quickly because I'm not English. You can talk me about that later in the bar. So, Hydrogate Metro Evolution. So I'm going to focus very much on the metro space rather than the long haul. So before we start talking about 100 gig, let's sort of just see where we are today. Don't reinvent the wheel. Evolution 200 gig is very similar to Evolution 210 gig. It's not exactly the same. There are issues uh, which we'll come on to later. But if you understand how to do 1 gig, 10 gig, 100 gig is not that different. I should explain that most of our stuff today, 18, 90% of our business today is, is multiple 10 gig services. Um, but we're just trying to paint a picture on how to go to 100 gig. So, um, we're great at, as an industry at talking about DWDM, um, but please remember that the WDM bit is actually really simple. You don't need mute conversions, you don't need um, aggregation, you don't necessarily need amplification even, uh, certainly within the metro space. So WDM is wave division multiplexing, and there are two flavours of that. You have CWDM, coarse wave division multiplexing, and DWDM, dense wave division multiplexing. You can mix and match CWDM and DWDM. There are pluses and minuses for doing both, and I'll try to explain that in the next slide. There's also cheap and cheerful, I went off there, cheap and cheerful um, grey optics at the 1310 and the 1515 nanometer range, which you probably know already and probably using already. But you can mix and match these things together. I've tried um, to summarize this in a, in a slide and it doesn't quite work. So CWDM, Metro Access Networks, um, up to 18 channels, there's mostly 16 channels are used, typically between 100 meg and 10 gigabits per channel. You can run 40 or 100 gigabits around the 13, 10 nanometer, I'll come on to that later. Typically, there's no amplification possible, but yes, there is amplification around the 1310 using preamps. So everything I've written up there so far is a maybe. In the DWDM, absolutely long haul, many thousands of kilometers, and there are lots and lots of good vendors out there who, who can drive that sort of distance. Uh, typically up to 80 channels, although there's 100 specified in the um, standards. One to n times 100 gig amplification is possible, uh, and then you get further. I'm going through this rather quickly. I do acknowledge that, but of course these slides I'm sure are available. So you can do this using active DWDM where you need transponders and you need a lot more um, transceivers, or you can do it passive. The pluses and minuses are if you need a, a demarcation device, you need something where maybe you've got some SNMP management on it, you need an active system, whereas passive works just as well, and you use less transceivers. And it's cheaper. <coughs> if we focus more on the metro space now, there's no doubt that the metro space is evolving at a huge rate. Um, if we look at the switch fabric within routers and, and uh, switches, there's a lot more capability now in the metro edge. More and more switches are coming out with very high density uh, devices uh, from virtually all of the vendors. So more and more switching will be done locally. So is 100 gig the answer to everything? Depends. Being a politician, it depends. Andrew Schmidt, never met him, but apparently he's a nice bloke. He says that um, you should use 100 gig where there's insufficient fiber. Or, where we're seeing at the moment, is where you're trying to get higher density, more density on a, on a switch fabric. 100 gig is being deployed and it is being used today. When I'm talking about 100 gig, one thing I forgot to mention, you could easily apply this to 40 gig as well. 40, 100 gig is, is relatively interchangeable. So when you need to transport 100 gig, which form is best? Well, we'll look at four different ways on this now. Active versus passive, or coherent versus direct detect. 
on the transceiver side of things. So just to remind you on the active versus passive, very similar between uh, 1 gig, 10 gig and 100 gig. And again, if you're using a passive, your costs generally are much lower. And we're all interested in costs, correct? Yes. Say yes, Steve. Even if you disagree, please just say yes, Steve. So coherent versus direct detect, pluggable optics. There's a lot of debate at the moment about coherent versus direct detect. And I think in probably a year's time, because my crystal ball is very cloudy, in a year's time, coherent will probably be the de facto standard. The issue today is cost. It's just a lot more expensive to do it. The coherent pluggable transceivers um, tend to use one lambda, but there's not, they're not available en masse at a reasonable price today. Well, it, depend, it depends on your definition of reasonable price, of course, and also the reasonable price of your switch router interfaces, because they tend to be rather expensive at the moment also. But they're coming down, because Juniper and Brocade and Cisco and, and um, all the rest of them are good guys as well. We're agnostic, by the way, we don't care. The direct detect side of things available today is at least five different transceiver manufacturers, all based in Far East. So there's a choice out there. So there's the Finisars um, uh, of the world and others. It's strange how your brain goes dead sometimes. And others, vendors. There's a choice. The challenge we're finding, and I'll come on to some of the results we've had from testing in a minute, the challenge we're finding is the support of these pluggable optics is very dependent upon very dependent upon your actual switch or router you're using. There's no hard and fast rule here. Um, for example, a PTX works sometimes, but an MX doesn't always. And I'm not picking on Juniper as an example because Cisco, we haven't even got there yet. But Brocade is working very well, for example. Alcatel Lucent stuff is working well. Please remember there are two transmission windows. For those of you from an IP background, from a layer 3 background, we're going up now to a layer, layer 1, okay? Simple stuff. There's two transmission windows around the 1310 and the 1550. I've got the C band there, there's C and L band there, but just trying to simplify it. Please remember there are two transmission windows that you can use to transport 40 or 100 gig in the C or the L band. If you want to amplify it, I said earlier you can't amplify, at the C band, at the um, O band, but you actually can. We have this trans, uh, semi, this the SOA amplifier. It's in working in Amzix and Netnode uh, and a few other places, and we're extending that 100 gig. This is a 100 gig LR4 standard pluggable optics available from lots of different vendors up to 60 kilometers. So this is a standard. If I didn't mention before, nothing special about this transceiver. LR4. 13, 10 nanometer extended. And it's not installed on that bridge, but it's installed by the end of that bridge, which some of you may notice it's somewhere a bit further west. <laughs> one, end, one end in Malmo, the other end in Copenhagen, running 52 kilometers, 100 gig. I want to spend a little bit of time on this slide now. And again, what we try to do here is simplify and show this all on one slide so it's not 100% accurate but I'll give you an example of the pluggable transceivers that are available today no FEC, no forward error correction, these are standard transceivers available today but because this, you don't want to necessarily buy a very very expensive transceiver to plug into your switch or router switch or router so you have the old band uh, 100 gig at the top um, it's 1 times 100 gig, number of transceivers, one, quite simple. Up to 80 kilometers, eh, lies, damp lies, and marketing statistics. It depends on the error rate. But if you want to run a decent circuit, then you can run it certainly at sort of 50 kilometers, maybe 52 kilometers, with a reasonable error rate. CFP LR4 transceiver. You can mix and match 10 gig and 100 gig, recognizing you've got 10 gig today, migrating to 100 gig in the future. Uh, in theory, that you can run 500 gigs over that. That's 40, 10 gigs, and 100 gig. Again, using standard pluggable optics. I forgot, I forgot to do the DWDM bit. The 
DWDM bit is a little more complex. In the DWDM and the 100 gig LR4, I forgot to mention there are actually four lambdas, four times 25 gig lambdas running within this transceiver. You can mix and match them, and in theory, you can get up to 2.4 terabits. But to be honest, if you're going to be running 2.4 terabits, I hope you've got some diversity of route, because that's a lot of traffic. Again, uh, using standard EDFAs, you can amplify this over uh, for several hundred kilometers because it's within the C band. So again, standard amplifiers, nothing special about the amplification. Using uh, CFP DWDM direct detect 4x25 gig pluggable transceivers. So what does that look like in a network? Because this wouldn't be a, a, a proper uh, forum if we didn't have a network diagram, correct? What we're trying to show here is 40 times 10 gigs over a standard MUX 40. This is a DWDM MUX DMUX over a fiber pair. And at the bottom here, we're showing an LR4 110, LR4 100 gig running over 13, 10 nanometers using a solar amplifier to take you up to 50, 60 kilometers. This is installed and working today. If you're going to be doing multiple 10 gigs, you can use a 100 gig DWDM CFP, which is 4 times 25 gig, as I mentioned. It's four tunable lasers within this 4 times 25 gig. There are typically two different versions available. There are tunable optics in this space, and then you can actually have fixed, i.e. just four lambdas fixed within that. So if you're going to deploy this in a real scenario, you would probably have a number of fixed transceivers with a couple of tunable ones for spears, etc. And it's quite simple. Um, what's the lights on the top, on the, on, the, on the bottom right? The first one tends to have four blue colours. These are tunable. You can choose whatever lambdas, whatever frequencies you want within your DWDM's 100 gigahertz spectrum MUX. And then CFP2 is, is green, just using different lambdas all the way up to 88, and we have an 88 channel MUX available for deployment today uh, with uh, amplifiers and um, dis dispersion compensation units built in as well. But I understand that's at a very, very high level. Just trying to show you where this is going. And this can be extended up to several hundred kilometers. But because we're focused on the metro space, of course, typically metro to me in this side of the Atlantic tends to be 50 stroke 60 kilometers, whereas the US have a different view on the world, but we're right. So how does this build? So we have an existing MUX running N times 10 gig using uh, 10 gig SFPs or XFPs or SFP pluses, whatever your favorite switch supports. You then want to run 100 gig DWDM, um, 100 gig CFP using four times 25 gig in the 100 gigahertz space using standard MUXs. You may or may not require compensation and amplification. It depends on your link. You can build that in. Using an interleaver, you can actually mix and match then your 10 gig and 100 gig over your same fiber pair. So give me a migration story. I sound like a marketeer, don't I? Yeah. You can even have OADMs. You can even have optical ad drop MUXs built into this as well, so you can actually drop uh, lambdas halfway around your ring if that's what you so choose. Another application we're seeing is there where people have, um, what we're trying to show in the middle here is a, is a network that exists with some optical um, equipment from Sienna, Infinera, Adver, um, whoever, all of those vendors, but look, looking to extend the reach down to the, out to the customer of 100 gig, and this is being deployed today. This is, we have customers doing this today, where they're extending within the metro area the reach of that 100 gig, because they have to rent a fiber from another service provider to reach that customer. So you can use the same carrier inf infrastructure, you can use the same um, WDM vendor to do that, and then if you like, the last mile still hasn't gone away. The last mile is still the first mile, is still here to extend the reach of that 100 gig. And we're seeing this more and more, where they don't want to set at the customer side, they don't want to put a very, very expensive WDM mux in. It just doesn't make sense for one circuit. 
100 gig is happening certainly within the banking and the educational space. So, just some examples of some tests in non fex So these are standard transceivers without forward error correction. We've tested a number of different scenarios in 20, 40, and 60 plus kilometers. Um, in theory, we've got a 2,200 gigs. We haven't got anybody who's anywhere near that at the moment, so you'd be a brave person. It can work with existing 10 gig DWDM. Transceivers were tunable. The customer switch, as I mentioned before, is the biggest gating factor here, and we're still working um, with a number of uh, um, companies doing more testing on different switch types because it really is switch dependent about what they will and will support. Uh, there's lots of stuff going on at the moment with A and B registers on the transceivers, which I don't profess to understand, but I'm not going to talk about that any further. So we did the setups, distances, no dispersion compensation, no EDFEs and no Italy, but we worked with Brocade and Alcatel, we worked to a certain extent with Juniper and we've done, and it works with certain switches on extreme. We can't be specific about every single switch type because it is very dependent upon the make and model of your individual switch router. But there's no reason at all why it won't work, it's just have to speak to your switch router vendor to see if they'll allow it. And they're all good guys. That I mentioned, we're agnostic to all of that. Out of time, probably more, probably over time. So the metro space, 100 gig, is happening. Um, it is a valid solution. There is a migration story. 100 gig passive is is is, is a simpler and lower cost alternative. And um, coherent pluggables will come along, no doubt the price point on the coherent pluggables will drop, but Direct Detect works today at price points that companies can afford. I went through that rather quickly. My name is Steve Jones. Any questions? <laughs>